in between Matthews and Knight. Just soft hands into the short mid-wicket region. And picked up two easy runs. The field on the deep back was square boundary. Couldn't get in quick enough to prevent the second. And that's good running. We need to see a lot more of that though, Stacey, because we don't see it very often. The, bat the batters hustling between the wickets. Yeah, and there's some big gaps on that leg side. So again, no need for really a big shot. You just need to find those gaps and either soft hands and, and get singles, rotate the strike for now. And when the ball is in that slot, in that area, then might as well go big. Leg. And I must mention that second T20 between India and Australia. So goodly, 187. Runs with Chase, and then it went into a super over. India got across the line eventually. In the air, caught and mid on. Soft dismissal. Knight just chipped it gently to the field at mid on. Was easily taken. Skipper get her first wicket. West Indies are in some trouble. Two wickets down already. This is over number three. Yeah, nothing too spectacular about that delivery from Nat Siva. Kaisia Knight, you can see her bat turning in her hands. Not being in control. And could only pick out Lauren Bell. And of course, with her height, that will not go past her, that mid-off region. Disappointing start for the West Indies. Two wickets already gone in this only the third over. Ten runs on the board. Not the, the start Captain Matthews would have wanted from her team. Yeah, they've really got to do something different, Wes, and this is just too easy. Show some fight. And this is T20s. As far as the world is concerned, West Indies, they are a very good T20 team, a competitive team at that. Very disappointing well, start. Just a shade, just a shade back. England, on the other hand, could have justified why they opted to bowl after winning the toss. They know how shaky the West Indies batting is. And we've seen that in, a, in all three ODIs. So they figured, get them in early, probably dismiss them for a small total. And so far, they're on course to do that. Someone got to step up now. And it puts a lot of pressure on Hayley Matthews because as captain, it's almost like she has to do the bulk of the work. She has to score runs. She'll have to take wickets and, of course, execute some good fielding. But Rashada Williams, she has been really good throughout the series, the ODI series. She'll be hoping to carry that form into this T20 series. She was really impressive in ODI's a standout player. Three overs gone, 10 for two. Yeah, she scored that 54 in the second ODI. In 54, that's out of 80 balls. And in the first match, she scored 34 of 54 deliveries. So I like what I see from her. I like the fact that she's worked really hard on her game. And as we have a look at that scorecard. Yeah, nothing much to talk about, but skipper Haley Matthews, she's there. Rashada Williams is still there as well. And well worked into the leg side from Haley Matthews for a single. A lot is going to be dependent on Haley Matthews, the skipper, and of course Williams, who is in good form. These two need to really but as many overs as possible, try to get a decent partnership going. Not going to be easy because the England bowlers are on top of the game. They've shown that throughout the three ODIs. They're continuing the good form. Bell in particular. Dragged into the leg side this time around from Rashada Williams. She'll pick up two. Not the prettiest of shots, but she gets two runs and she gets off the mark. She's confident. And that is always important. Confidence 
it makes you feel invincible but at the same time you got to be careful because sometimes you can get a little too overconfident and maybe just give it away but i do like her approach yeah likewise i don't mind seeing shots like these over that inner ring rashada williams this time around picks up another two comfortably and not very much risk taken most certainly as long as she can continue to be aggressive but within reason without taking any chances she's going to be okay and i think what it also does is force england to now make a change in feel and that's kind of what you want you don't want them to get complacent and, and think that this is the feel good shot delivery from bell as expected <laughs> she's not afraid to, to, to test to test the middle of the pitch we have seen it often enough just to keep Williams honest and let her know where I can always get one up head high <laughs> don't take any liberties and that's good aggressive bowling yeah I like the fact that Williams didn't follow it because we saw a number of, of the West Indies players following those short balls and getting caught out because they rushed and she's pulled back that line Lauren Bell she knows how dangerous Williams can be. If you get a bit too close to her, she will have a go. So Bell, I reckon, is really thinking about her game. Pull the length back. Don't give her that free flow of the bat. And that is good bowling. Good shot just slightly short and William looks equal to the task slapped it with a wide mid wicket into the fence it goes for four good shot she's very aggressive and that's the way she plays four overs gone 19 for two yeah, I must say I like that aggression from Rashada Williams given width and dispatched it into the leg side and this is good this is a good comeback what they need to do is not lose wickets you've already lost two which is more or less a sin in the first power play and that's exactly what we spoke about a few moments ago Stacey Ann. if you get too close to williams she's gonna go and that was the that what happened just the previous delivery bear was a little bit too close to her oh well trying to be too cute that was the way to go captain Haley matthews trying to do that little flick of a fine leg lost a stump and west indies are in serious trouble wicket number three is gone yeah we were just talking about losing wickets in this power play not sure if this was necessary from skipper Haley matthews and katrin brunt coming back into the attack not siva previously bowled the over from this end this um, sir kirkley ambrose end yeah, just not the shot that was needed for that ball from Haley Matthews. Certainly wasn't. She lost her off stump, which simply means the ball wasn't on leg side enough to play that scoop over the fine leg. Yeah, probably just premeditated. Premeditated, and it cost her wicket, and that's a prize wicket. England are really way ahead of the, uh, in this game so far, and it's only number five over, not even the fifth over, just into number five. What are these players thinking, Stacey Ann? Not sure, so quickly, but I'm happy to see young Janaba Joseph, who's on debut, coming out to the crease. She's a bit of an all-rounder, obviously, but at number five, she bowls as well. But this isn't the ideal situation to come in. Yeah, she's playing the first game as well. She's here in the power play. Not ideal situation at all for her. Now I must say she's. Usually an opening batter. So coming in early is nothing new for her, but just a situation and her debut as well. Added pressure. Just 18 years of, old, uh, years of age, Janaba Joseph. I'm sure her dad and her family is probably just sitting at, around the TV right now. Of course, and why wouldn't they? 
loud appeal, but clearly going down the left side. Umpire not interested. She's also following in the footsteps of her brother, and BK Joseph, who would have represented West Indies under-19 men in that 2020 World Cup. So basically a cricketing, a cricketing family. Yeah, daddy really works hard with, it, with both of them. She's already looking solid. Can't detect any signs of nerves, Stacey Ann. <laughs> she looks really solid. We don't know what she's going through. We're miles away, but she looks really good so far. Solid defense. Went for the pull shot. Edged over the keeper head into the boundary ropes. It goes for four. And young Joseph is off the mark. Not afraid to play a shot. And you can hear her teammates from the under-19 players. He wasn't these under-19 players. If our camera guy can find them, they're up over the player pavilion stand. They are cheering on. You can hear them through the stumps mic. They are cheering on Janaba Joseph, one of their own. She yeah. seemed to be a positive player. I've never seen her before. My first time. Maybe you have. I mean, that's a for delivery and she went for the pull shot you know most players on debut and early in the end is we want to see a few deliveries maybe over or two i'm just wondering if it is that well concussion rule of course because it seems to have come off the helmet as well i thought for a minute it came off the bat scoreboard is still saying she's on zero so simply me it didn't hit the bat Came of the helmet. So and know what was the signal from the umpire? Yeah, there they are. West Indies under 19 team. And manager Marissa Aguilera, former captain of West Indies women. And a few of under 19 players. I had the privilege of having a look at them at their training session today. Seanel Swa. As we have a look at that delivery again. It definitely came off the helmet. I thought for a second it came off the bat. I was singing her praise, they saying she's off the mark. <laughs> and but taking no prisoners as well, because <laughs> Catherine Brunt, it doesn't matter that you're on debut. What matters is I'm representing my country and I need your wicket. Good aggression being shown from Brunt this time. And it's good to see young Joseph is okay. Didn't have to go off. And that's always a good sign. I can say that she's pretty much accustomed to these type of short bowling as well because her net sessions are usually really, really vigorous with her dad and her brother. I mentioned he played for West Indies under 90. Very, very solid in defense, young Joseph. That blow on the helmet didn't do any damage to her. Didn't as well. Five overs gone, 23 for three. Well, Western is in deep trouble at the moment. Three early wickets being lost in this power play. And they'll be hoping that they can have a bit of consolidation in this innings. As we're going to have spin for the first time today. Sophie Eccleston has been a standout in this format. Pretty much in both white ball formats. One of the best in the world. If not the best. Matty <laughs> Richards. Another one that's the best in the world alongside me. <laughs> Well, we were having a little chat the other day about who, you, you know, who we, we considered to be the best spinners in the world. You thought maybe Belinda King? Alana King. Yeah. Alana King, sorry. But uh, Sophie Eccleston, number one rated spinner in world cricket. On from the Sir Andy Roberts end here. P 
picked up 82 wickets in her 61 T20 internationals so far. She'll be looking for more. Let's dissect the first five overs from a West Indies perspective. Obviously, not going to help the fact that they've lost their captain and then mainly their experienced players in Akaisia Knight and Alia Alin, who continues to struggle at the top. She's, she did have that sort of good performance in the New Zealand series, Mali, which you remember. Mm. But that was at number three. I'm surprised they haven't tried her there a bit more often. She scored 49 in that game. Yeah, she's been backed at the top of the order throughout the series. She hasn't managed to get into double finger figures in her four innings, three in the uh, ODIs and the one here this evening. So maybe a few, a few uh, changes in terms of the combinations, possibly. You can tell with that shot as well, played by Haley Matthews, player under immense pressure, maybe just affecting that shot selection process in her mind. So much going on around the team as well. The one thing that Heather Knight has done really well, you look at the field placing. Yes, you're inside the power play, but a lot of close fielders in catching positions. Extra cover, point, of course, that slip, and a straight mid-wicket. Now ops for Joseph to send that long on bat and bring up the deep cover into the circle. Yeah, throughout the series here in Antigua, regardless of of the uh, fielding restrictions. Outside the power play, they've kept fielders in the circle. She went down the track and could have easily been another wicket, but Amy Jones missed that stumping. And it just slows up <laughs> as it gets there. Heather Knight doesn't have the gloves on. And I think she does well in the end. Yes, yeah, did very well. Uh, and I good to see she came through that dive as well, unscathed, coming off that hip surgery earlier in the year, July or so. So she looks fit and rearing to go. Look at Eccleston, though. Just how good would it be for Heather Knight after her seamers set the game out so beautifully in the first five overs, then to be able to go to someone like her who continues to look to pick up wickets. She was well outside of her crease there. Janaba Joseph gets away with it though. Fabulous option to call upon. Peach, absolute peach of a delivery to end the over. Just the one run off the bat and four in the over from Sophie Eccleston. End of the power play, all England, 27 for three. Yeah. Yeah, Sorry, it's, been, it's been all, all England here, but at the same time, we're getting a little glimpse into the present and the future of this uh, West Indian women's team with Janaba Joseph making her debut here today. So if you're a fan of the women's game, you should definitely be taking a keen interest in developments going on here. Yeah, interesting that she's coming at number five ahead of someone like the vice captain in Shemaine Campbell. Mm. But... Watching her in that CWIT 20 blaze earlier this year for Trinidad and Tobago, she batted at number six, but in the 50 over format, she opened the batting. So it tells you then that clearly they see something technically in her batting, and especially to fast track her now. I mean, they were just here for a camp, but due to the injuries, easy to call upon the 219s, and you had to get off the mark, but this will be a huge moment for her in terms of her career and just remembering. And even going into that on 19 World Cup, Mali, it will give her some added confidence knowing that she's been backed at the international level. Yeah, it will do her uh, confidence the world of good. Like you said, going into that under-19 World Cup, matched up here against, like, a Catherine Brunt. Sarah Glenn. First time seeing her in the series. Wasn't opted for that 50-over squad, but seen that with a couple of players, Brunt, Glenn, Boucher as well. Went short. And it does tell you about the resources and the pool that they have on offer England, that they can have players playing specific formats. Yeah, and I was just saying, you know, to be matched up against uh, Catherine Brunt, a baptism of fire for the young lady. Got a bit of purchase on that delivery. And like you say, England, multitude of options at their disposal. Leg spinner Glenn didn't take part in the ODIs, but she's here, first T20.
progressive and finally will get off the mark comes back for two as well that was a much more progressive stroke from joseph using her feet getting close yes just showing that proactivity that you want to see from young players advancing to glenn and just went past that left hand but hit quite sweetly made a good sound in through the stump mics in our areas so young joseph is away two from her 12 deliveries Again, that, and one of the more impressive things about that, if you look at that passage of play, the ball before chipped down, got it past mid off. That forced Heather Knight to put the mid off back to long off, and then she gets an easy single. So it's just about opening up and understanding those sort of things, as you would know from your playing days, Mali. Yeah, that shot over past the mid off in the circle just uh, forced that fielder back, gave her a low risk option. <coughs> Yeah, these two timing it well so far. Another two, so much better over for the West Indies. Five from it. It's 32 for three. Yes, and it's all about managing risk. Uh, it did go. It was in the air for, for quite a bit of time, Nikhil, that shot down the ground. Quite aerial, but it forced the fielder back, and then after, it's just given Joseph the, op the option of just stroking it down the ground for runs, rotating the strike. What do you want to see from a young player? Five options used so far for the English. Lauren Bell, she might have been impressive. Just the way she was able to get that ball to tail in to the right hand and already picking up her first T20 international wicket. This is interesting. Heather Knight is going to come into the attack. Just the one over for Sophie Eccleston. And I saw her bowling in the warm-ups and it was a bit surprising, but... I think it was the first ODI she would have bowled a few overs as well, Heather Knight. So just another spin bowling option here. And also the fact that she bats in the top order just allows the team uh, more balance. That's a shot though. Excellent. Sublime strike again from Joseph using her feet. And this time she'll get her first boundary in international cricket. Young player with a big heart, clearly. Yeah, she's been hit on the helmet uh, to that bouncer from Brunt, but she's stuck in there and she showed good footwork, actually, in the last couple overs or so, advancing to the spinners, getting to the ball at, on the pitch, at the pitch, and uh, she's gone aerial. And you hear the West Indies under 19 teammates in the background just giving her all the encouragement in the world there, Nikhil. I think the impressive thing about this is that even after they lost the early wickets, pressure would have been on. She still opted to play her shots. When the ball has been there in terms of manipulating the field, she's done it really well. Onside this time. Seeing the ground staff getting a bit close to the covers. Let's hope there's no rain around because England will be thinking, well, they're well on top of things at this stage. And she's gone on to seven from 16 now, but she just opened up slightly and she's just starting to play with that freedom of youth that you'd want to see from a young player on debut. Straight this time, but the fielder is there and puts it down. A rarity for this English team. Catherine Brunt down at long on. She had to pull out the dive as well. They've been excellent in the field in the series, but... Yeah, it seems like it took her a bit of time to really judge that one. She was camped on that long on boundary, but... Didn't judge that one to the best of her ability, Catherine Brunt. But she's been left down on this occasion, though. Nikhil. Well, Amy Jones, just too quick. And Janaba Joseph, she tried to use her feet a couple of times in the over. But to her wrongdoing this time. And just so smart from Heather Knight. Part-time option, pushing one wider. And Janaba Joseph almost beaten for pace in the end. Well out of her ground. Big wicket for the English. They take their fourth. She just chose the wrong one. It was a bit flatter from Heather Knight, actually. Outside that off stump. And Joseph still chose to come down. Maybe just panicked a little bit when it wasn't in her area. But Amy Jones did the work. And young Joseph has to go. But like I said, we're just getting a bit of a glimpse into the present and future of this West Indies women's team. And in her 18 or 20 deliveries or so. 18 deliveries to be exact. 
So a, a few good things, Nikhil. Not often you see Heather Knight bowling and into the attack straight away. Just gotten her wicket. So that was just what the English would have been looking for. Shemaine Campbell comes to the crease. The vice captain. Just 20 wickets for Heather Knight in 88 T20 internationals. But she can do a job, and they haven't played Charlie Dean, the off spinner. So she got some variation in this attack with Glenn, the leg spinner. Got Eccleston, the left arm spinner, and then Heather Knight, who can also bowl off spin. On this surface, same surface that was used for the 3-1 internationals. So they believe it will be conducive for the spinners. To be fair, we saw Eccleston spin a few in her only over. I think Glenn will be searching for a bit fuller length. A couple of times he's dropped it short and Rashada Williams has been quick to look to pull. Hasn't executed well, but fine leg is up in the circle. So it's risky in terms of the length she's bowling. First outing on tour though, it's, she's landed them, which has been good to see from an English perspective. Shot on, excellent from Rashada Williams. And she has batted extremely well in the one international series and then carrying over that form into this first T20. Yeah, top run scorer in the ODI series on this occasion, just going across the line to Sarah Glenn there. But she got the length that she wanted. No fielders on the boundary uh, actually in front of Square on the onside. Behind Square, sorry. And she picked out that gap to perfection. Yeah, well, it really was glorious. This time fuller, but certainly down leg. I love it though from Rashada Williams. Just she's clearly assessing the length very early. A couple of times she tried going through that onside and didn't execute. That time though, changed the shot, went for the sweep. And once she got it over that feet at square leg, it's gonna be a certain boundary. Just yep. Mali, they need someone to follow in her footsteps. The way she's gone about things against this excellent attack. Yeah, I like that shot there to end that over from her, though. Just good manipulation of the wrists to find that gap. End of nine. The score is 43 for four. I think they have played Sarah Glenn well so far. Think about the fact that she averages 16 with the ball in her career. 37 T20 international, so she's certainly been a main wicket taker for them in this format so the fact that they've been able to keep her out and still score boundaries when they have the opportunity you think that will be a step in the right direction but it's again losing wickets crucial times and that collapse We've seen it in the one international series now seeing it in this first t20 sophie eccleston for her second over just the one from heather knight a lot of pressure on rashada williams as well here in this situation easy very easy oh. and put down but that was very surprising from an English perspective. They haven't caught the ball well under lights. And it's second catch going down. That one much easier than the first. Oh, yeah, that's for sure. The second one going down, like you said, Nikhil. Not sure what happened there, whether she was looking directly into the lights. Lost sight of that one. Sarah Glenn. Well, Sophie Eccleston, who loves picking up wickets like every bowler, Mali, she will not be too happy about this because did everything she needed to do, got Rashad Williams into that false stroke, and then good position it seemed from Sarah Glenn, but just didn't hold on to it. Crucial chance going to begging. Yeah, it peeled off the outside edge and just looped to her at, at uh, that cover point position and not sure what she wanted to do with her hands, whether she wanted to go reverse cup or orthodox. Campbell off the mark. And these two now will be very important. They've opted to drop Campbell down the order. In this event that they had that collapse, someone with a bit more experience who's proven can probably restructure the innings. But remember, this is a T20 game. Just 10 overs left after this. On the back foot. But height would have been the issue. Shadow Williams has had a couple of lives. Living dangerously. Yeah, and maybe that's the... Uh chance that Shemaine Campbell would have needed 
in this situation. She's been short of runs in this series. And an easy catch that should have been taken has gone down and she's got a second opportunity here. Sending that mid-off field the back to mid long off, sorry. So both mid-off and mid on on the boundary. Excellent length, consistency at its finest from Sophie Eccleston. End of 10 over is the halfway stage. It's been all England at the moment. 46 for four. Yeah, she should have had a wicket as well, Sophie Eccleston. So she's been her normal miserly self indeed. But we'll have a double change. It will be Seth Burton and Stacey Ann King. Richards, the scorecard is not looking the way that the West Indies women would be happy with. In fact, only Rashad Williams getting into double figures, Stacey and King. At this the halfway stage. Not up to 50 as yet, losing the top four. Yeah, 46 for four after 10, even though they are 10 extras. Rashada Williams and Campbell there at present. Alia Allen, Matthews, who I think will be disappointed and should be disappointed with her shot selection. Kaisia Knight, who really hasn't come to the party in this series against England thus far. And well, young Janaba Joseph, 8 of 18. Well, at least Joseph uh, registered something, showed positive intent. And I think you have been speaking about investing in the on the 19s and we have seen the first opportunity being given and I think uh, as Mally mentioned there are a few good things about her very positive in approach her intent she looks to be solid uh, technically as well and I think this opportunity can only breathe uh, better performances over time yeah, I also like the fact that her under 19 peers are also here cheering her on both her and Trishan Kalinda and Trishan Holder from uh, the under-19 team out of Barbados, Barbados under-19 captain. So it also just shows some of the others that there's opportunities for them as well, knowing that two of their peers got called into the senior team, that it's not unreachable. That's right. And they're preparing for that under-19 World Cup. Similarly, the West Indies and England, you can see the under-19s there enjoying it. They're also preparing for the big T20 World Cup in South Africa. As Matt Siva continues. And Rashad has really uh, been doing well, uh, Stacey Ann, in the series so far. In fact, the leading run scorer for her team in the CG United uh, ODIs. And now she's the standalone. Candle perhaps wants to join the party, but Rashada has been doing well. And I think uh, earlier we mentioned perhaps uh, a trip up the top of the order. They have been ideal at her natural position because, again, no good start. Yeah, at this point, West Indies, they're literally depending on this partnership as well as Kaishona Knight to come and Chanel Henry to really get something going or, or to, to get a respectable total that their bowlers, because they're bowling, it, it has been pretty good in the tournament. They've gotten this England batting lineup all out on two occasions. Campbell top edges, pulls nicely, one bounce, four runs. You got the impression she was in control, but I thought the ball bounced a bit and came off the top edge she gets her first for the west indies women moving up to 50. yeah it didn't seem to be in full control it seemed to have rushed her as you mentioned but gets it in a gap and that was important and again england just showing that they're not afraid to use those short balls they're coming through for a quick one get it in the end that was tight and that was a poor throw from Heather Knight and a poor call, a poor judgment of a single from this pair. Campbell literally pushed a bit too hard into the offside. They're lucky to have gotten away with that. Would you reckon that 
They will be looking to get close to a run per ball by the end of the innings. Yeah, I think they should. Just to the left of the diving short mid wicket, Rashad Williams playing a bit dangerously, a bit uppishly. Yeah, I mentioned before that on both teams, they've played each other 22 times as we see the end of the 11th over. West Indies 53 for four. They've played each other some 22 times. England have won 13, West Indies have won eight, and there's been one tie match. So in terms of competition and competitive nature, they're quite similar in terms of West Indies getting wins. But I just think that, of course, with other players involved, like you had DeAndre Dutton and Stephanie Taylor, who would have been part of that success as well. That's right. But the balance tilt in England's way without those players. Good delivery. That well played from, uh, from Rashada Williams to keep that one out. Yes. <laughs> that one really came into her, rushed her a bit. I like the option of soft hands from Rashada Williams used there. Oh, diving effort. We see those opportunities, or we may call them half chances, but they are hit inside the circle and they're hit with power, but in the air. I think that's it, but she'll have to get tighter to give, to make a chance out of that. And this has been a good stint of play for West Indies, Rashada Williams and Shermaine Campbell. And I like the fact that you're seeing some different shots as well. When you're in form, you're in form. <laughs> she took her time and well stroked down the ground. Yeah, you could just tell that Rashada Williams, well, she's in her zone. She's really enjoying her batting in this series. She's timing the ball very well picking her spots. A nice feature though in Campbell's approach, she's not afraid or timid at all to go down the track to the spinners. And a good confidence booster for her as well because she hasn't had good scores in the ODIs. She had two scores of naught and one score of seven, Shamine Campbell. 60 for four after 12. They have definitely stepped up the run rate. The current run rate just on that five run per over mark. And the two batters who are at the crease, they are the only two who would have gotten double figures, so good opportunity here with eight overs remaining. It's interesting that Chanel Henry, well, I'm hoping that that's not the position that she's coming in. Perhaps adjustments would be made, but Bell is back. Well, this is tight. A direct hit. She goes. Why did they take that single? Yeah, we've seen this a number of times between the West Indies women, especially where Rashada Williams is concerned. She does all the hard work. Literally pushed that into the offside. Tap. Looked like Danny Wyatt. A direct hit. That's one of their best fielders, England. So one has to pick the fielders and know you can't take a chance against uh, this fielder. But I thought from the beginning, Rashada came forward and played into the offside and she was just on the run without really realizing that the ball was hit with pace. And at the end of the day... It almost seemed as though she was just having a, a jog in rather than really push to get in there. You have built an innings, worked it, just... To backward point. 
direct hit from Danny Wyatt in that point region. But again, Rashada Williams getting a start, 23 of 25, and literally just giving it up. And who can you blame? Because also Wyatt would have had full view of the non-striker's end. And to miss from her position, giving her natural inclination and gift as a feeler, picks up and she had time. And that was it. Rashada Williams. And down goes another. Campbell, just as though she wanted to join Rashada Williams back in the pavilion, went after the next delivery from Bell. And all she did, yep. scooped it in the air. Yeah, disappointed. A disappointment in that shot, Shemaine Campbell. You've just lost a wicket. And as a senior player, you just need to be thinking that we need to build a partnership here. Chanel Henry, the new batter that came out. So again, understanding the time of the game as well that you in herself and Chanel Henry, you're already the two senior batters left. You've got to take much more responsibility than that. Certainly. Cannot be the ideal situation for the West Indies. Because also with Chanel Henry in, she would have had a perfect counterfoil to stabilize things and allow Henry, who is naturally the more aggressive, to take control. And then Henry and Campbell, they are two good runners between the wickets as well. So I just wonder what was the thought process there from Shemaine Campbell. So two wickets from two deliveries here in over number 13. England, huge advantage at this stage. Winning the toss and sending in the West Indies. They must be happy. Well, Gajnabi, her first delivery. Perhaps just trying to measure what Bell has to offer. Bell has been bowling remarkably well. Yes, she has. Picked up her second wicket there, Lauren Bell. In a third over, and she must be uh, one of those to whom England would look come the T20 World Cup next year. Bowling well at both ends. Gajnabi looks comfortable, and you can tell that she is a confident player. The only question that may be asked is how well would she progress towards the back end of the innings? But she has the opportunity. I think Cherry and, and Fraser and, well, Chanel Henry, well, she's got to talk to her out there. Wide signal by the umpire. Clearly, uh, you wonder why would Bell have changed the line because the previous one was about fifth stamp. It uh, had Gajnabi being a bit indecisive and then this one she sprayed it away. But you can understand it's impossible to be perfect. She's almost a perfect bowler. Now she goes down the leg side. They're yeah, just trying to do a bit too much and possibly from a West Indies perspective they can look at the fact that with the new ball she gets it to swing a lot she's now come back with the ball a couple overs older and just trying to maintain previously a, a, an off stump line an outside off stump line so not as much swing so now trying to do too much and bowling down the leg side Gajnabi goes big and it will be four beats any dive she timed it well didn't really hit it as hard as she could have but it was in the slot and she will be delighted for that four to get off the mark yeah missing her length lauren bell and good execution from shabika gajnabi and goes over that inner ring and giving chase lauren wilfield hill and not siva when the ball wins that race to the boundary good confidence booster for Gajnabi.
This time, just short of the wicket keeper. The shorter delivery working once again. It's almost like you've got to expect it in the over. And rushed again. Just short. Hit. Yeah. 67 for 6 after 13. Any projections yet? I think we just got to wait this one out. <laughs> Well, the batters, they would be saying perhaps we need to consolidate. The option is stepping it up. Yeah, maybe just set smaller goals and decide on how much runs you want to be at 15 overs. How many runs you're, you're trying to get within these middle overs. Or pull over. Also deciding who plays leg spin better. Who do who wants to face who? Oh, that's an arm ball that beat her all ends up. She was playing back. A decision has to be made. Do I go forward or do I go back? And with that one coming in with the arm. Oh. This is excellent bowling. Excellent bowling. This one stood up a bit and was moving away from the right-hander. Sophie Eccleston. This time I like the footwork at least. Gajnabi was drawn into the stroke. Played it with more confidence than the two previous deliveries. Eccleston has been one of the standout bowlers as well in the, uh, in the ODI series. There is always an air of expectancy when she comes into the attack. And she's been really difficult to score runs off. But you've seen her, and, and from a West Indies perspective, they've seen her throughout those three ODIs. I'm sure there's footage. There's footage from us if they need. There's footage from Gary Bell where you see the areas in which she, she has been bowling. So you've got to find a way to counter-attack. A maiden. 67 for 6 after 14. Strangleholds. Yeah, you've got to find a way. Whether you use sore pants, try to work it into the leg side, cover those thumbs. As we have a look at the England bowling figures, Nat Siva standing out with her two wickets. And doing well. But One each for Bell, Brunt and Knight. Brunt would be real happy because she did uh, the key damage uh, and uh, Bell would also be happy with her returns. That was short. That should have been put away. And I feel like the bowler is down. It looks like Sarah Glenn. She's holding the ankle. <coughs> Might have twisted that ankle in her follow through. hoping that it's not anything of that nature yeah, because they've already had two players injured England Freya Kemp and Capsi and Alice Capsi two of the young players as well well she's back up that's the important thing whether it's a matter of seeing through the over or that she's back to normal a bit ginger ish in her pool trying to work that one out Good single on the part of the West Indian batters. I think that they need to do that a bit more often. Just work those balls into either the leg or offside. And Heather Knight, she's almost on the ring coming in. So just find those gaps and keep rotating. How would Chanel Henry want to get the strike? Oh, 
Well, we know she's a power hitter, Chanel Henry, and she can clear the boundaries, but she's got to get on strike first of all. Well, she pushes the button and she gets it in spite of the direct hit. I think that's what pressure does because she needed the strike, as you mentioned, but at the same time, well, she calculated it well. I mentioned she's one of those better runners between the wickets and Chanel Henry. Can't penetrate the field. Yeah, going for power as well. You I'd like to see her just rotate, just stay there and, and be there till the end. Five remaining after this. And she's coming, but no response from Gajnabi. They would definitely need to work it out here. 69 for six. Real pace at this point. Stacy and King and myself will leave. And in comes Nikhil and Sakurtley. Five overs remain in this innings for the West Indies and has been a tough journey so far. First T20 international of five in this series. So currently Ambrose alongside me. So currently it's been a disappointing showing again with the bat in hand. Certainly is disappointing. Some very, very soft dismissals. No one really looks like they want to stand up and bat for a long period of time. But you gotta, you gotta give credit to the England bowlers. They are bowling well. Forcing the West Indian batters to play rush shots, hence their demise. So kudos to England. And they're well in the driver's seat again. Will be Brunt change events for her after bowling with that new ball. It's an interesting one because you look at the New Zealand series a couple of weeks ago that was right here at the Sir Vivian Richards Stadium, 5T20 Internationals. And the West Indies, they fought well. They lost the series, but they were able to post scores in excess of 110, 115. This stage, just going at 4.6 runs per over, they'll fall well short of 120 and possibly 100 as well. So it seems to have lost that bit of a fight that they were able to put up against New Zealand. Hit that powerfully, but there is that middle fielder. Where do you think, sort of, you're not able to translate? Of course, it's a different opposition, different bowling attack. Not able to translate that sort of fight going from one T20 international series into the next. Too many poor decision making from the batters. Not really giving themselves a chance to get in. Lots of soft dismissals. Sometimes you wonder what the, party, the batting plan is because you can't really tell from the commentary booth. Well, both these at the crease in terms of the West Indies batters are more than capable of trying to just restructuring and refining. Surely they've got to get to 100 if they want to be competitive, but... We know how powerful this England batting lineup is. They showed it in the one international series. And all three games went over 250 runs. And one of them went over 300. So it's going to really take some bowling effort to restrict England to whatever they post. Another dot delivery. The batting certainly has been disappointing from the West Indies perspective. Struggled badly in the ODIs. Didn't even get close to 200 in any of the three games. And now today, the batting wars continue.
Gone through that offset a couple of times. Chanel Henry hasn't been able to penetrate, though, the infield. I just wonder, looking now towards the future, I mean, we know that the batting has been a struggle in recent times since you've had those big absences of a D'Angelo and of a Stefani Taylor. But there's a couple of members sitting now in that stand watching this circuitly, going to that and 19 World Cup next year. The intent you saw from Joseph, is that sort of the step in the right direction? I did like the way she, she approached the batting. She was, posi she was positive. And you know, you know, most times you're making your debut. You tend to be a little bit more cautious and maybe a little nerves jangling around. She didn't show any signs of that. 16 overs gone, 71 to 6. But she really looked positive. So I like the intent. And of course, you know, she got her teammates here hmm. cheering on. Every, everyone she scored, they were cheering her on. So I'm sure some of them in, in, in that on the 19th setup will be saying that, you know, we're not too far off. We're getting just West Indies senior team as well. And that should be motivation for them following the part of Joseph. Yeah, not only motivation, but I think what it does is something that Heather Knight and head coach John Lewis have spoken about at length in this team. Young players coming in has created competition for places and all of a sudden they've seen their senior players sort of elevate their performances to ensure that they maintain their place in the team. So definitely is a step in the right direction and the way Joseph used her feet against the spin, especially positive. So I want to see more of that. Nat Siva. Ariel, but don't want to carry to Winfield Hill. Don't want it long on. Something about Nat Silver so currently just not for picking up wickets in this T20 international format. Used at this stage of the innings more often than not. Four had the night death over his last five. And it's allowed her to just be so efficient in terms of wicket taking. 76 wickets at an average of 21. And changes of pace like that allows her to keep her economy to under six and a half. When you're bowling at this stage, that's massively impressive. Very impressive. Very impressive. It's always the most difficult time to bowl. The dead overs. Batsmen or batters, in this case, are always coming after you. Falling at the pad, but angle down the leg side. May have struck Henry on the foot. Just to clarify, Nat Silver's only got one wicket, not the two, so that may seem to have really hurt Chanel Henry looking to go. Yes, I, I saw her earlier today during the warm-ups and she was heavily strapped. Her legs were heavily strapped. So I reckon that ball hit her somewhere around the knee area where maybe she's carrying a slight injury or something and the physio is on his way out to have a look at it. Here it is again. It just seemed to catch her on that part under the pad where sort of that padding ends. Space between the pad and that ankle leaving it exposed. And a good Yorker attempted by Nat Siva. Looking to attack the stump, looking to be aggressive. Yes, and that hurts. Immediately, she dropped her bat, took her pads off. She's in some pain. She's being attended to. And the shoe is off very gingerly, Nikhil. Yeah, so Neil she's Barry, in some pain. He had to take his time when taking it off. <laughs> so she's an important component with the ball as well, Chanel Henry. Will bowl that new ball and will look to hit the deck. So... They can't afford to lose her already under the pump, only having 73 runs on the board. But you talk about, it gives us time so currently to reflect on what a performance this has been from England. I mean, we know that they're dominant in this format, number two ranked team in the world, but they would have watched earlier today and seen, West in, sorry, seen India and Australia battle, scores of 188 being chased down, going to super over and think, well, look, we know that those two are up there, but we are there as well. And that comes from consistency. You're not number two in the world by fluke or by chance. You got to be doing something really good to be so high up in the in the order. 
and they have been playing some wonderful cricket and they continue to do so as they showed in three ODIs. They were magnificent against the West Indies. And now they are really putting the sword to the West Indies again in this first T20. You see the English players in a huddle at the moment and Heather Knight has just been so animated just always encouraging her team and they'll have their eye on that t20 world cup early next year so currently surely after going to the 50 over world cup finals and finishing runners up they'll be one of the favorites looking to dethrone that australia team and looking to defeat india like they did a couple of weeks ago it's, it's going to be a bit of a challenge for them as well because now we're talking about the world cup we got the best teams in the world competing beating west indies here is always good for their confidence but but at the same time the West Indies aren't playing that well so it's not a good way to really judge how good England are at this point but once they get to the World Cup where they got the best on show that is when they'll, you, you, you'll know for sure where you are and where you have to go and you look at the squad I think another challenge will be for them is the fact that they're so young a lot of an experience that they've opted to try to develop in these series leading up to that World Cup but you look at someone like a Lauren Bell, just 21 years old. I know she's bowled extremely well in this series, in both series, really. But when you, as you said, when you get to work up and that level is increased, how do they react? Charlie Dean, just 21. Be interesting, very interesting, but I'm looking forward to it, certainly. Especially the, the under-19 World Cup, also coming up early next year. So it seems to be good now, Chanel Henry. Straight away goes short. May have got an edge on it, but Amy Jones up to the stumps. Never easy for a keeper against this high pace. Boundary, much needed for the West Indies. Ashinette Henry is struggling. She's still walking with a bit of a limp. Went for the pull shot. And of course, as I quite rightly mentioned, Nikki, it's difficult when you're standing up to the wicket for any keeper. Ashinette still seems to be in some discomfort. Her left leg. What about the aggression from that silver? Went Yorker, hit her on the foot. Next delivery followed up with a short ball. Then search for the Yorker again. Coming back for this two. And Henry, who is limping, is she short of her ground? Leslie for Junior says no. She got home in the end. That was a dangerous double to take, given the fact that she's struggling with that left ankle. Certainly was dangerous. It was a huge gamble. She was very fortunate to have just made a groan, but she's still hobbling. She's really in trouble. And the West Indies, from a bowling standpoint, is going to need her. And when you look at her, that's her left leg, that's giving some problems, which takes most of the brunt as, as a bowler, as a right arm bowler. Another cutter into the pitch. And that is something that I think the English have done ever so well in that third one international on this surface and then here in the first t20 take pace off the ball and make scoring difficult end of another excellent over from that silver end of 17 overs just six runs from it 77 for six 79 correction so eight runs from it but you look at that scorecard just the one start really from rashada williams no one else able to get even into the 20s and that has been the problem throughout the three ODIs as well. Apart from Williams herself, who had, who had a couple of good scores, no one really stands out and put up, in, put up any good performance. Well, three overs remaining. 18 legal deliveries for the West Indies to try to get to that 100 mark. They made it difficult for New Zealand, but this is a world-class England unit. Lauren Bell, down the track and over the top. Doesn't matter how they come at this stage. That will be a much needed boundary for Shabika Gajnabi and the West Indies women. Good way to start the over. Yes, advance down the track to Bell. Went for the big drive, got a thick edge over third man into the boundary for four. Good. Welcome runs for the West Indies. They need quite a few more of those if they can.
Excellent, because she has that pace currently and took pace off. Beautifully bold, beautifully bold. She realized that Gatnabi is coming really hard at her and taking the pace off was wonderfully executed. They're doing a lot right, England, in terms of development of fast bowlers. Someone like Lauren Bell, very tall, 21 years old, and able to get that lateral movement. Should just be one. Then you look in the reserves. They've got Izzy Wong. They've got a plethora of options to replace the Catherine Brents when they are finished and hang up their boots. So something, definitely something they're doing right in England in terms of their development. And that's what it's all about. Once you have a proper structure in place where you can develop young cricketers, it's a breeding ground and a feeding ground for the international team. She's got hold of that one. Power from Chanel Henry. I think it may have just bounced on the way over the boundary. But that was a statement piece. Hit it very, very hard, Chanel Henry. And we know she's capable of doing that. Just inches inside the boundary ropes. Giving Bell something to think about. But she is that kind of player. When she's going well, she can be destructive. Went into the pitch. But Henry did so well to get that in front of square with mid-off up in the circle. Still up in the circle mid-off. Goes a lot straighter this time, Lauren Bell. Just be single. Down the track again, but Kajnabi hasn't quite connected. And this time, catch taken. Not Silva, she doesn't put down too many. So, small partnership developing for the West Indies. Had to get a move on, and England strike again. They cannot fall Kajnabi. Overs are running out, runs needed to be scored, and she went for the big hit. She's got more height than distance. An easy catch in the end. It's never so easy when the ball goes that high into the lights as well. But good effort from Gajanabi, but she has to go. Gone for 13, Shindika Gajanabi. 13 from 20 deliveries. Shindika Gajanabi has been dismissed, caught by Nat Sivo. 89 for 7. Of Lauren Bell. Good catch in the end, Nikki, because England have dropped a couple of easy catches earlier on in the innings. That was the last dismissal. Gajnabi advancing down the track once more. Got it high in the ear. Um, a good catch in the end. What about this though from Lauren Bell? Three wickets in this game. Following up from her performance in the last game she played in that second ODI where she got four. So clearly under the lights at the Surviving Richard Stadium, she's found something and she's gone back to it. Certainly doing a wonderful job for her team. Just about every time she's called upon, she delivers. To think that before this, she just played two T20 internationals and hadn't picked up a wicket. So this being her first, not only has she got one, she's got three in her four overs. Just gone for 26 runs as well. So certainly, so currently, one that they have picked out for the future and she's showing why. Eccleston continuing. Fletcher new to the crease and just to finish that fast bowling point on what they have to come it will help their development the fact that they've got John Lewis now new head coach former fast bowler himself but also the former fast bowling coach of the England men's team so he will bring that experience over to the female setup on um, ball excellent delivery hard to score against
don't think that this that the delivery was short enough to play the square cut. One thing you notice about Eccleston at this stage of the innings, much quicker through the air, trying to get through the over as quickly as possible, this penultimate over. Goes straight up. Hasn't quite got it, Chanel Henry, but she'll get away with it. Falls in to a safe place in that onside. So... Big let off for Henry and the West Indies women. Two feelers coming in quite quickly. One from the long on and one from deep mid wicket. But just didn't have enough pace to get there. So currently Ambrose, one delivery away from finishing her spell. She's conceded five runs, Sophie Eccleston. Can't ask her much better. That is unheard of in T20 cricket. In any cricket, for that matter. <laughs> well, of course, you had your seven for one, so you guys in the same boat. Miss Field, but they'll have to set up for one. Probably smart in the end, because Chanel Henry will retain the strike for that final over. End of 19 overs, 92 for seven. So currently, seven for one. My goodness. How is that possible? I think, well, we all know that's much more impressive <laughs> than none for six in four overs. <laughs> no, that seven for one came in a spell of 30, 32 deliveries. Is that your best, you think, cricketing achievement? In terms of the spell itself, most people rate it as number one because seven wickets for one run is unheard of. <laughs> but if you're talking about my favorite spell, I wouldn't have that as a number one. Because it was the first day of a test match, mm. nothing on the line. So it was very easy, no pressure, nothing. So I reckon I would put that 6 for 24 against England in Trinidad when they bowled them over 46. Mm. I'll put that ahead of the 7 for 1 because of the nature of the game and our backs were kind of against the wall. And one or two others as well. The 7 for 1 was, there was no pressure, no pressure whatsoever. Final over, bowled by Catherine Brent. <laughs> Oh wow, Chanel Henry's been very strong through that offside. They've opted to keep mid off and extra cover inside the circle and she's taken full advantage. That is Chanel Henry at her best. Can be destructive. She hit that with some degree of power. Didn't have to move. Could this be the innings that the West Indies needed? Just employing a bit of extra fight. Helping them get past 100. You never know in this format of cricket. Even against this strong England batting lineup. This time into the onside. There is protection. Would you have one of those? Two. Very surprising. Thought she would have wanted to keep the strike. Face the most deliveries, but clearly she believes in Afi Fletcher and what she's capable of doing with the bat in hand. Afi Fletcher didn't seem all that interested in taking the second run. She was probably saying to herself, you try and take the final few deliveries, Henry, but that wasn't the case. Yeah, the line that Catherine Brunt is bowling, she's got four fielders on the leg side boundary, but she's bowled three deliveries in this last over and all have been outside that off stump. So almost like a double bluff or she's just not being able to execute. Now she sends deep, a third into a deep third on the offside. Leading edge. And another two runs for Afi Fletcher. Busy at the crease. 
And you just think, so currently, if the top order was able to employ some of this fight when you only had two fielders outside the circle, the West Indies could have been easily past 120. Some very, very soft dismissal, top of the order. Some, some really terrible shots. I couldn't quite understand why they were all on call for. That is why they're in this position at the moment. There is a field out there. And another drop chance. And it's not Seva of all people who is very good fielder, especially in that deep mid-wicket position. So another two runs. And so far, the biggest over of the innings, 11 runs from it. It was struck really well from Flutter, but look like he just died on her a little bit. Probably thought it would have carried to her a little bit better, but it didn't. The West Indies have got past that 100 mark. Final delivery. How many can they get from this last legal delivery of this innings? From 69 for 6 after 15 overs. They've done well to get to this mark, but they've got to finish the innings strongly. Momentum. They, so certainly, they certainly have done well to get over the 100 mark. Again in the offside, this time just chipped over Heather Knight. She may have just misjudged it. Henry wanted three. They'll settle on two and a mammoth last over in the context of this innings. 13 runs coming from it. And allowing the West Indies to finish on 105 for seven in their 20 overs, you would think those are currently still below par. Way below par for this strong England batting lineup. But West Indies have done well to get over the 100 mark. Because at one stage, you thought they were never going to get even to 80, the way they were playing. But it may not be enough to challenge England. They got a very, very good batting lineup. But we have seen strange things happen in cricket. So West Indies will have to go there and believe they can restrict England for below that total. Not going to be easy, but at least once on the board, you can try and defend them. Well, they were in these positions a couple of times in that New Zealand series, and they fought their way back and won a couple of, well, won one game and tied another in that five-match T20 international series. But that last over could be crucial. The first time they scored more than 10 runs per over in the innings. So encouraging signs going into the innings break. Hayley Matthews will be hoping her bowlers can do what they did in the one international series and fight. But the West Indies are able to pose 105 runs on the board in the 120 deliveries. Don't go too far because when we return, we'll have the resumption of this first T20 International.
the resumption in this first T20 international. West Indies taking on England. First time the English have toured the Caribbean since 2016. The English women, that is. And already taking a 3-0 series win in the first 3-1 internationals. So that was one portion of the tour. And now they'll look to win this T20 segment. The openers out in the middle. Sophie Dunkley and Danny Wyatt. Chanel Henry with the new ball in hand. Haley Matthews will have a tough task if she wants to defend this 105. Not a big total. Good afternoon to you. Good night, actually, Mally Richards. <laughs> good night, Nico. Had a good uh, meal? <laughs> Chanel Henry with the new ball. And she would need to have a good one, Mali, because they need her. Shana Henry hits the deck hard, uses that new ball. Did play an excellent cameo to get them past that 100 mark. Yeah, and uh, she's been carrying an injury as well. So it's been quite encouraging to see her take the new ball here from this. So currently Ambrose end. Showing a bit of resilience, the young woman. Really is a tough proposition for the West Indies when you think about the fact that we already know the big absence of DeAndre Dutton, but you look around in terms of the senior players, they've lost so many due to injury. Deand well, Stefani Taylor, Shamilia Connell, and then in this series, after the one international series, then you lose Shadeen Nation, who's your more experienced batter, and Shakira Selman. So a very young team all of a sudden and against a very good English team. Yeah, it was, wasn't that long ago that West Indies were celebrating World Cups in this format. The women. Uh, so the, it's definitely a team in transition. Saw so young Joseph make her debut here this evening as well. So, like you said, just missing a few of the big players. For whatever reason, injury, retirement, loss of form. Another swing and a miss. And it tells you about that slowish nature of the surface. They've done well, the West Indies here, to keep them to none after the first four deliveries. Because you think about this England team and what we've seen in recent time, Ali. I remember in that India series in England, they chased down 134 runs in 13 overs. And Sophia Dunkley has led the way, got a half century in that one. If she gets going, this could be over very quickly. Yeah, we saw the rate that she, she, she went at when she scored that half century in the uh, second ODI, Sophia Dunkley. A player who just gets on with it, scores at 115 in the T20 mm. arena. This time she gets it, pass it on, and it will be. The first runs for England. sherry -Ann Fraser <laughs> makes an attempt, but I think she may have made contact with that boundary rope. But remember, the umpires don't have the luxury of seeing that on the television replay, so I think she's going to get away with it. End of the first over, three for none. Yeah, and it happened just below us here in the, uh, the media box. Nicole, sherry -Ann Fraser went down, did a good job to, to, to stop it first time, but... She got there quite quickly, good slide, but then just seemed to make contact while she was in contact with the boundary board. But like you said, got away with it. And also, uh, in her defense, things happening so quickly, mm. she wouldn't have known that she, what she would have been in contact with at the time. Also for the umpires, hard to see because it's on the other side of her body. So made a good effort in the end. She was, the cricket gods smiled, Mali. Good effort in the field, and they rewarded her. Saved one run for a team. Good athleticism. Good first over from the West Indies side of things. Haley Matthews, the captain from the Sir Andy Roberts end. They're going to need wickets, Nico. Missed out. Mm. She'll feel like she missed out. What do you make of the fact that they haven't opened the batting with Lauren Winfield-Hill, who's mm. made a return in, back into this English T20 setup? 
Yeah, it's a bit of a surprise, really. Winfield Hill has been pretty dominant at the top of the innings this year in the 100 mm -hmm. women's BBL. Forced her way back into the T20 setup. So, a bit of a surprise. Not sure if she's carrying an injury or, or something. But adequate replacement here in Dunkley. This is really good stuff from the West Indies, especially to Sophia Dunkley, who likes to get going very early on in her innings. And she's such an important member of this batting lineup because when she fires and gets big runs, Mally Richards, England's performances mm. tend to follow. Down the trap. Can they take it, though? Oh, Puts down a big chance for the West Indies. And it was all about the pressure. Just built pressure on Sophia Dunkley. Eight deliveries, nine deliveries, correction for just three runs. I, would, I was actually just going to say that. Will a chance come here? Will, it, will Sophia Dunkley play a rash shot? Outside edge. Should have been comfortably taken at cover there. Extra cover. Looks like Rashada Williams. Second easy catch we've seen go down this evening. Hasn't been in that rhythm that she likes to start innings, but I was making the point before she had that chance. In wins in T20 international cricket, games that England have won, she averages over 30. When they've lost, she's averaged only 15. So it tells you how important she is to what England have done in recent times and since they moved her to the top of the order. Just her eighth time opening the batting. And also just her 35th T20 match here this evening. Bit of indecision, but good awareness in the end by Danny Wyatt. Gets to the other end. And again, she'll retain the strike. So 12 deliveries all have been faced by Sophia Dunkley. The West Indies just conceded five, though. An excellent start to this power play. Yeah, and I was, I was saying, just her 35th T20 international, Sophia Dunkley. So still relatively inexperienced at this level. It's just the two half centuries. But that strike rate really jumps out at you. And Danny Wyatt as well, so versatile, has batted in every position in this top six. Can be quite explosive, takes, will make good use of this power play. Yet to face the delivery though. It's been all Dunkley so far. And it still will be mm -hmm. for this third over. And what they've done with Sophia Dunkley has been an experiment that has really worked out for England. Seven times she's opened the batting, averages over 36, and a strike rate of close to 140 as well. So it's given her that flexibility to express herself, and it's come off for England. Something that they do all the time, experimenting different things and seeing what's their best makeup and construct of this 11. Hold the pose and put that in a museum. Sophia Dunkley, that is what we're used to seeing from her, especially at the beginning of the innings. Yes, with the fielder up in the circle. Just had to play through the line of that one. Just advance slightly, Sophia Dunkley. Seems to be getting uh, accustomed to the pace of this wicket. Just seemed to be mistiming them a bit earlier, but now just looking a bit more comfortable. This time goes through point. And there is a field that deep cover, but she'll have no chance. This is destruction from Sophia Dunkley. And all of a sudden, a much better start for England. Yeah, she's, she's decided to take the aerial route here. The last two deliveries this time up and over that uh, point fielder. Well hit again from Dunkley. And England now just beginning to find run scoring a bit more easy. Also, it'll be a lesson for the West Indies. She was through from her first nine. All of a sudden, she's hit two boundaries exactly. and scoring at a runner ball. That's been smashed. <laughs> Straight to the fielder. But all of a sudden, nine runs from the first two deliveries, and that asking rate has come down to close to five and over. Very easy going if England bat the way that we've seen them go about things in this 2022. Three very different strokes there in the first three deliveries. One down the ground, aerial, second over point. And the third one absolutely leathered through extra cover. 
didn't pick up the boundary though. Danny Wyatt, first delivery, and finally off the mark. They've waited a long time to face that first delivery. Wyatt, I thought actually they may have dropped her down the order and opened with Winfield Hill, but this opening partnership, especially in that India series, which they won to one, was something that worked so well for them. The power play scored at over eight runs per over, so clearly they want to keep that construct and the makeup of the side. This time over mid-off. The awareness, just excellent from Sophia Dunkley. Each time, uh, she just seems to be hitting the ball cleaner and cleaner. This one, probably the cleanest hit out of all those uh, boundaries she hit in that over. And she's gone aerial again, Sophia Dunkley. Just seemed like Chanel Henry has changed her length in this over, Mali. The first over of the innings, just three runs conceded, five dot balls. And she started a bit shorter. All of a sudden, she's tried to be full and look for wicket. Uh, on those uh, shots down the ground and timing them to perfection. Well, one key element to consider is the Jew factor because I saw in that third one in International Mali and you don't usually get a lot of Jew here at the Sir Vivian Richards Stadium, but in recent times since we've gotten later to the, into the year, mm. seen less wind and a lot more Jew. So the spinners today from England dealt with it well. The West Indies will be a test for them, especially a wrist spinner like Afi Fletcher. Probably one of the reasons why England chose to, to field first. Probably have the better of the bowling conditions. Can we get flies for flies? Can we see the flies? This time she finds it. No, she doesn't. Still gets one run. And Danny Wyatt, she's been quite quiet, actually. <laughs> it's been all Sophia Dunkley. Wyatt just facing her second delivery of the innings. But what a record she's got at the T20 level. She's got 200, Nikhil, for England in T20s. Yeah, been around for a long time, mm -hmm. Danny Wyatt. 130, this is her 136th match. Yeah, been the leg break from Hayley Matthews. And you see the flags there, Mali Richards, which are usually swaying mm. in the wind. Mm. Just steady, still conditions. And it always tells you then that Jew will play a part. It's been some cold nights here in Antigua. Excellent piece of fielding. And saved a certain boundary. Add extra cover. Yeah, it's pretty normal this time of year. Just a bit cooler out, especially at night. Haley's got the rag out, so maybe the Jew just coming into play now. We only saw it twice earlier in the year for the CG United Super 50 Cup. Already Towards the back end of the tournament as well, yeah. So already in three out of four matches, we've seen that Jew factor come into play. And I think it will come into play as well in Bridgestone Barbados, where the series moves to for the final 40 20 internationals on Wednesday. So both teams with a lot of spin, something to think about. Down the track, gorgeous. And I think it may have gone all the way for six as well. Sheer power from these openers for England. Yeah, and both openers particularly strong down the ground. Wyatt on this occasion just tossed up slightly from Haley Matthews advancing finds the middle of the bat. England charging uh, along to this uh, paltry total of 105. 
have to hurry. Just putting pressure on the fielders. These two very busy at the crease. Another good over for the English. Ten runs from it. And all of a sudden, 29 runs have come from the last two overs. And the four, 33 for none. Yeah, it was a pretty good start. But the English now have just gotten accustomed to the conditions out there. Seem to be timing the ball a lot better now. Both batters, only five deliveries from Wyatt, but Dunkley, she's had the majority of the deliveries in this first power play. We look at what's to come as well. It's Winfield Hill, Nat Silver, who's the player of the series in that one international series, had a night the captain, and Amy Jones. Then you have all rounders who can chip in as well. So a mountain to climb for the West Indies, and they're going to look to Sherry Ann Fraser to try to help them get some wickets and get back into this game. And they're going to they're gonna need wickets, and that's for sure, but they're going to have to try and apply, uh, find a way to apply pressure, be it to Danny Wyatt or Sophia Dunkley. And that's proven to be a challenge for the West Indies. Just a few too many boundary deliveries, especially in the power plate. Just the two fielders allowed outside the circle. That is such smart batting from Danny Wyatt because she created the room for herself and went through the offside, smaller side of the field up, and just teaching the West Indies a lesson at the moment. Yeah, everyone on that, on that offside, up in the circle. And she, she, she's gone aerial as, uh, again. So the English just going aerial here to beat this inner ring, beat down the ground and square of the wicket. So... That tells me that the West Indies probably been a little inconsistent in their lines and lengths. It was kind of surprising to see her start with both the fine leg and deep backer square on the boundary. Now she's going to bring that square leg fielder in close and push the third back. It's almost like very defensive to start with that two on the onside. It's a field where she'll be under immense pressure though. Again, trying to open up that offside, Danny Wyatt, such a smart batter, intelligent. And you see it sort of in the way she goes about things. Yeah, and if Sherry Ann Fraser gets too straight as well to Danny Wyatt, it's an easy pickup shot over that leg side. No fielders on the boundary in front of the wicket here on both sides. Third man and fine leg back. Tells you she's probably looking for that Yorker, looking to be very full. Caught mid off and mid on up. There is that protection to just be one. And that's a good length, actually. She hit that perfect length, even with Dunkley advancing. Couldn't quite get to the pitch of that one. I just think, Mali, you look at this series, even the one international series, and the West Indies have really found it difficult. But what I love is that you've got the under 19 rising stars in the stands, you've got a young team seeing exactly how England have gone about things and what the best of the best looks like. Yeah, up close and personal. Uh, West Indies under 19 women here seeing what's required of them in the future. I'm sure coach Steve Liebert will be very happy to have two of his uh, charges in and amongst the seniors. Big mix-up. And it was... Oh. Should have been the first, and I still think it's the first. It is. First wicket for the West Indies, even after a couple of hiccups. At this stage, doesn't matter how it comes. And that's a big wicket of Sophia Dunkley as well. Some poor cricket there from Sophia Dunkley. Actually gave up. Stopped if she had probably continued. Campbell couldn't actually, it's Knight couldn't take that one. But it's Campbell who does the work to effect that run out. So in the end, the West Indies pick up their first wicket here this evening. Sophia Dunkley has to go. She was looking pretty good. And in ominous form here, but from a West, Indi West Indian perspective, they'll be happy to see the back of her. Scores 40 for one. All happening in the middle. 
Really, that one had everything. But still short in the end, and she just continued to run. Danny Wyatt was very strong and determined that she wasn't going to run. It brings... Looks like not Siva. She almost got all the way down. Actually, she got three quarters of the way down, uh, Sophia Dunkley. Second time I think we've seen her run out in this series. A bit similar to Rashada Williams. And Lauren Winfield Hill, 32 years old. She's made her comeback into this England team. Now comes to the middle. A big series for her. Just trying to cement her place in this squad since she was dropped out of the one international team during the World Cup. It's her first T20 international since 2020 in that T20 World Cup in Australia. Hasn't played a T20 since. But as you said, Mali was excellent in the 100 and excellent in the women's big bash as well. Yeah, and she'll be relishing actually these batting conditions here. Have to reball that one, Sherry Ann Fraser. Good pace on that one, though. Made a bit of a thud into wicketkeeper Knight's gloves. Maybe just striving for a little extra. Just losing the line there, Sherry Ann Fraser. But I think she's improved with every game, to be honest, with the ball. It's one positive to take for the West Indies out of this leg of the tour. So classical. <laughs> Winfield Hill, but can't get off the mark straight away. End of five overs. A dominant start by the English. 41 for one. England dominance over the West Indies continues. Four to one for one from five overs. Chasing a very small total of 105. If you're just joining us, England won the toss and elected to bowl first. Restricted West Indies to 105. Joining me is my good friend Seth Burton. Seth, what do you make of this game so far? Man, it's an easy walk in the park for the English. And Ali Allen, who is getting to set, she knows that they are under pressure here. Well, the one bright spark for the West Indies in the field was that run out. Yes, terrible mix up. And they got the price carp. Of Dunkley, she really looked in good, solid form. A low crouch to the batter, but he's so confident. Play some good, shoddy strokes with some degree of power as well. Was taking the attack to the West Indian bowlers, and they were quite happy to, to get her out. But his batting lineup for England is so good and so strong that 105 shouldn't give them any trouble at all. Not at all. Uh, as you, you look at a comparison uh, with what happened against New Zealand uh, in the T20 series a couple of months ago in September, <coughs> uh, 105, even though the West Indies would have lost, they would have been able to take the game into a couple of balls with two balls remaining in one case super over. But this England team is a dominant batting team. Certainly is. It's all England. Oh, drop catch. Another wicket would have made a difference. That one was going to the right. Haley Matthews, the captain and the most experienced. Uh, really an excellent catcher, but she spilled that one. The West Indies would not be happy. She got her hand to it. It was a little bit wide, to be fair, 
she made a valiant effort you know it would have been a stunner had she held on to it well, but she, she but she couldn't well she comes out of the slip now lovely shot that's for brilliant secretly it's absolutely brilliant that's from the top jaw short and wide from Elaine and Wyatt pounced on it got into good position and I mean it was four all the way said four all the way a classic square cut you would have seen that perhaps back in the 80s and the 90s with Gordon Greenwich and Sir Richie Richardson oh yes those guys were magnificent when it comes to that kind of cut shot two of the best you'll ever see and that one from Wyatt was really top jaw. She races on to 20 and she's really in good nick here. Good delivery though from Aline. She opting not to go wide as she would have uh, the two previous balls, but carrying it closer to the stumps. It's always going to be difficult to defend 105 against this strong England lineup. And they already raised the 47 set. Just approaching the end of the sixth over. Well, this one goes down to the back of the point boundary. Four runs. Chanel Henry tried all she worth. Not as in control as the previous stroke. The 50 comes up at the end of six to be 50 one for one uh, from the power play. That is excellent chase. Magnificent start. Shinel Henry tried for all her worth. He really covered a lot of ground, but in the end couldn't prevent the boundary. This is really a display of excellent batting from Danny Wyatt. And it really shows when we speak about the depth of the England batting, it's understood because Dunkley, she herself, started well, which is a lesson for the youngsters. Uh, first over was a bit impatient, but once she got into the groove, it was all hitting, and the only way she would have been dismissed was via the run-out route. I just hope that the West Indian batters can at least, I hope they are paying attention to how the England batters are going about this one chase. So when they get to Barbados, for those remaining four T20s, they will have an idea how to approach an innings. They're scoring really quickly set, but nothing out of the ordinary, no risk taken, just good cricket shots. Well, you know, we saw it since the first game of the series, the CG United, uh, ODI, they got to 307 so currently, and it looked as though they were just batting casually. It wasn't the sort of Aussie approach of the Heelys, them going over the top. It was classic cricket uh, shots from these England batters, and they are really growing leaps and bounds and closing in on the top draw teams. And that's exactly a chance of one out here. Easy single in the end. The running has been magnificent as well, putting the fielders under pressure. But that's something I've been talking about for years, Seth. Especially for the West Indians, both male and female. Once you mention T20 cricket, the first impression is always power hitting, power hitting, power hitting. And when you can't get the, the boundaries, you soak up a lot of dot balls. Now, you can play proper cricket strokes without taking too many risks, too many chances, and still score at a rapid rate. That's we, right. We don't do it in the Caribbean. It's all about sixes and fours. And that has to change because here, the ladies are going at over eight runs per over. And I'm sure we would look and see how easy it is at times just to play with soft hands pick up the ones pick up the tools and then when you're going over the top you're going over top with conviction exactly that's the point but most times 
You either can't score or you get boundaries. There's no middle ground. And you need that. So currently speaking, I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I believe Mally Richards would. Because you, you're speaking, you're, you're a great former West Indian player. You, you're in the broadcast, but I'm encouraging you and Stacian to put in your coaching credentials at the top level. I want to put you under a little bit of pressure on that. <coughs> oh, that is lovely. We spoke about timing, placement. It's just precision. It's just the walk in the park. Short delivery from Fraser. And the kind of form that White is in, said Burton. She wasn't going to miss out. And she clubbered that Man. through White mid-wicket. One bounce into the fence. The fielder at the mid-wicket just behind, just in front of Square, had no chance of coming around to cut that off. It was, it was hit with tremendous power. Class. Another one. Another one. Well executed. Picking the spot. Not losing her shape. Just being commanding. And poor Sherry and Fraser thought she had it well and short. And that one was off the front foot. And what an effort from Chanel Henry. But that was not enough. 60 for one after seven overs. England are really motoring along. See, like they're on the M1, heading to London from, <laughs> from Northampton. Yeah, but, I mean, another short delivery from, from, from Fraser. No, I was just about to say Shirley and Fraser Price. Well, I guess uh, what, what, the what, names what, are close. Yeah, certainly. what am I thinking athletics? You know? Well, perhaps <laughs> the athletic ability of Chanel Henry in retrieving may have thought that would have been a uh, Shirley and Fraser, Fra <laughs> Fraser Price effort. Yeah, but, I mean... Wyatt is in sublime form set. She's yeah. raised to 32 from only 16 deliveries. This one chase could be all over in a matter of a few overs if they continue in this vein. Now, and here is the difference between the team, if I may insert that. We're looking at a good score from West Indies. We're saying Haley Matthews. You're looking for a good score from England? You can call from 1 to 8. <laughs> exactly. That's the difference. Huge that, difference. That is the difference. They got a strong, long batting lineup. Danny Wyatt, she's scoring at over 170. Try create. This one comes off the edge, though, but it finds the boundary. She cannot do anything wrong, even though it's a top edge. It finds the boundary. They are really in charge. In fact, that came from Whitfield Hill and West Indies, perhaps. Wondering what? Not a bad delivery from Ali Allen. Actually, it was a good delivery. But Winfield went with it really, really hard. Peel off the edge, over the top of first slip, into the boundary for four. No fault of Aline whatsoever. That's a better delivery. She's really finding her way. And uh, Mali was speaking earlier about Sherry and Fraser, uh, a bright spark in the CG United ODI series. Ali, Ali is not batting well, but I'm often of the impression that she can do better as a bowler, and we're seeing glimpses of that here. She certainly has improved over the years. Developed into a fine cricketer. She can bat a bit as well. Lovely shot. Well, Chanel Henry has had her work cut out. Seems as though the balls have been following her. Patrolling that area on the cover point boundary. She's had a lot of work to do so far. Running around. But she's a good cricketer, Chanel Henry. And I, I reckon she don't really mind patrolling that part of the field. Well, when I see her bat, <coughs> and I'm wondering why is she so deep in the order in the T20 game, she looked in that cameo to be the most commanding of the West Indian batter in this game. But she comes at the lower half of the batting. I reckon maybe because of what she's capable of. There she goes again. She's been very, very busy. 
I reckon because of what she's, she's capable of doing. They probably fi figured, I'm just saying, maybe the coaching staff, captain, figured she didn't need her to finish in innings. But if there is no platform. <laughs> <laughs> but if there isn't any, it's more pressure on her. I tell you something, Seth. You could hear in the stump by the crack when the ball hit the bat. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice sweet sound. sound. Coming out of the sweet spot, as they call it. Sweet sound like Sir Kurt Ambrose playing the guitar. Well, yes. Well, you have, you, got, you got to be specific, the bass. Because most times you say guitar, people tend to gravitate to the lead guitar, you know? So you got to be specific. The, the bass, bass sound, boom, boom. That's correct. That was a classic shot. Over the top, and it will go into the extra cover boundary for four. Positive intent, I think, is paying dividends here for the England team. Danny Wyatt, she is on the way. She's really pressuring the West Indian batting, uh, the West Indian total. Fine shot over the top, 71 for one. So currently only after eight. This one, Chase, is turned out to be a very simple one for England. Wyatt really playing some wonderful strokes. She's been aggressive. Anything slightly off, she has punished. Well, we, we, we looked at our friends over there, so currently they said when the West Indies found themselves 19 for 3, they said they are not discouraged. So I'm wondering at this stage if they are indeed discouraged or they are being entertained. Well, there is certainly entertainment from the England batters. Wyatt in particular, don't clear where gone, who did entertain as well. Went by the one or two. So Afi Fletcher is going to come into the attack. Is it a bit late? Or, or, or do you think, given the circumstance? It doesn't really matter who comes into the attack now. <laughs> with only 35 runs to get from 72 deliveries. So, so the question, should she have been pushed into the, the power play? Well, that would have been an option. Considering her experience and something totally different. But the way Wyatt is going, I'm not so sure if anyone can really stop her now. Even if she's just missed no set, the damage is already done. That's right. She has put herself in a and her team in a strong position. Reverse sweep being missed. Wide signal by the umpire. Well, how could that be? The batter did a reverse sweep. So all of a sudden, you're no longer a right-handed batter. You now become a left hand. I don't know. I'm confused. <laughs> I myself. goes down the track gets a single that's another feature we have seen all season from the england batters they move down the crease often you see that playing the ball into the cover region we see them trying to reverse sweep trying to scoop moving laterally trying to make space down the leg side but it would be interesting to see that again. Well, that wide decision. Well, maybe, maybe because she now switched from the right hander to left hander, is now down the leg side. Because <laughs> I don't know what else. Well, that's well this a is a wide. Certainly, that was certainly. Definitely off the pitch. Yes, that and certainly one could was. understand that. No arguments there, sir. Right, but the, the previous one, even yeah. though the switch, uh, you, th that was the original position. Yes. The bowler bowls to the original position. I couldn't understand that. That to me was extremely harsh. Well, that's Fletcher, not called. Fletcher, I think, is has lucky. gotten away with that. She is. That's a kind of inconsistency. I can't understand. Look at that. Certainly was a wide. And it wasn't called. Outside of the wide line? Almost. Oh, well, I don't know.
Well, pressure has become a part of the game with all this media attention, not only on players, but also on officials. I don't know, man. I really don't know. I don't know, Seth, but I'm still amazed and not impressed. Reverse sweep attempted. I'm not quite sure if there was an edge. By signal by the umpire, but she was beaten. One has to give Afi Fletcher credit. She kept her poise on that occasion. She didn't change, and I think that is what she was guilty of in previous deliveries. She tend to be following the batters, but now she has done the right thing. L lovely shot just to the left of Fraser. She picked the gap well, but Fraser was running around. She had good timing, good meat on that 76 for one. Only after nine. The running between the wicket is excellent. Both Wyatt and Winfield are really putting the fielders under pressure, trying to get any extra run that's possible but the west indies bowling how comfortable you are with the returns matthews 12 from her two overs the only one going at six or under hmm. well not a pretty scorecard is it in terms of the bowling no not at all 28 runs needed 66 balls left. So deliveries aren't really in the equation. I believe we're having an early night tonight. It would appear so. But As I can tell you, quite frankly, I'm, not, I, 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 I'm quite happy for that. <laughs> <laughs> you need some rest. The West Indian players would not be happy <laughs> to well, hear you say that. Well, they, won't be they, they, w they wouldn't be, but for me, I've had two long nights, late nights, Friday nights, Saturday night, music-wise as well so i don't mind getting them early turn i get an early bed ram harak with her first delivery she also would have been an option and as you plan for the t20 world cup we know that Haley matthews is the leading bowler but at the same time it would have been good to perhaps see what ram harak has in her arsenal in in the power play especially when you're at a stage chasing 105 but because it's also testing your arsenal but at the, at the same time you know when you're defending such a small total you want to at least maybe give you more experienced bowlers an opportunity to try and see if they can get a couple of wickets early as opposed to the less as opposed to the less experienced players sloppy Yes, definitely sloppy. Fraser would not be happy. But Ram Harak for that delivery must be given some credit because she did very well recognizing that Wyatt was coming down at her, kept her, her, her poise. And I'm going to ask you that question. What is, well, I guess too many batters didn't really come down the track for you, so it may be a hard question. But when the batter is coming down the track or is going across, What's the best answer? Lovely shot. Power and precision. Another four. How close was that to Ramirak? Well, it was chucked so well so curtly that she didn't have a chance. Yeah, it was chucked powerfully. And had she got her hands to it, could have done some damage as well. That's so right. So she did the right thing to pull out of it. So the question is still there. Well, for me, you know, sometimes it, it never happened to me that often. Happened a couple of times, yes, which is a part of the game. Sometimes Bassman may advance, come down the track to you after you deliver the delivery, which, which you can do nothing about it. But there are a few occasions where I've seen him coming a little too early. And my first instance was, a short ball. <laughs> that's Obviously. Right. So that's right. Well, 
Well, she, <laughs> she decides not to deliver. Perhaps another <laughs> tactic that may work for the bowler to recompose and come again. But Wyatt would like to have a half century here. Oh, good save on the part of Campbell. Run out. Run out. The second run out of the innings. The two wickets for the West Indies have gone the run out route. England losing their second wicket. Good work. Good work by Campbell at backward point. Collected and was easy run out. Wasn't even close. It was a suicidal run set, I must say. Probably a little bit over ambitious because they're so confident. But another wicket goes. But the case of too little, too late. Yes. Winfield Hill only 15. But at the same time, they are well on the way. 21 runs needed with another 10 overs to go. Twenty one runs required for England to take a one nil series lead, just requiring twenty one runs, and that's because of excellent work done by Sophia Dunkley for her twenty five, and then Danny Wyatt starting the innings didn't face a delivery in the first three overs, but since she's taken over. And happy to see alongside me. We've got a special guest. That's how things have unfolded so far. Last wicket to go, Lauren Winfield Hill, run out for 15. Jamal Smith, the assistant coach for the West Indies, under 19 tournament happening next year in South Africa. Alongside me, Jamal, good day to you. Good evening to you, <laughs> Nikhil. Well, fantastic to have you here talking about that tournament. But before we even get to the tournament, Janaba Joseph, one of the under-19 members, as, long, as well as Trishan Holder, drafted into this senior women's side. How happy are you, you know, girls that you would have worked with, seeing them get this opportunity? Yeah, well, obviously, we are very elated, really, as a management staff, uh, like Bird and Company, uh, that these girls have gotten the opportunity. It is the trend so far. Um, international teams are blooding uh, their young players, so to speak. So, you know, good to see at least one of them on the, on the part tonight, and obviously uh, Trishan is in the squad as well. Ramnara not getting the wicket to her name, but the West Indies picking up that wicket. Boy, did they need that one because it's been carnage to say the least from an English perspective. Starts with a dot. Nat Sivers come to the middle. What have you made of the approach from England? The way they just they've gone about their cricket. You would have watched from afar in the one international series and then had the opportunity to see them up close today. Yeah, well, one word basically, intent. And that is the major theme, especially in the power play. Um, on these surfaces, you, you try to, you know, get out ahead of the opposition. That's something that the West Indies could learn from. Um, I find they don't do as well as they could in the power play. And then obviously there's pressure coming through the middle and the back end of the innings. Uh, reflected really in a poetry score, you have to say at the end of the day, in the context of the game of just over 100. Afi Fletcher, just the one over for her so far, conceded just four runs. Six runs, correction. Into the attack. From this Sir Curtly Ambrose end. Now, Jamal, in terms of that young group that you have working towards that tournament, what is the excitement like? It's the first time we'll see an 18 World Cup in the history of the sport. Well, you know, again, the girls are elated. They're honored. They understand the responsibility. Yeah, and, and, and basically looking forward to the inaugural on the 19th Female World Cup. You know, there's still a lot of work to be done. By the end of the day, they've had two tours now. I'm um, seeing some different opposition, obviously different uh, conditions, certainly contrasting to those of the Caribbean. And obviously, we'll hope that this will all go well for them going forward, not only for the World Cup, but in their future endeavors. bit more flight on that one. In terms of the preparation for an event like the World Cup, what are some of the things that have gone into that preparation? You're about a month away now from the tournament, which begins on January 14th. <laughs> a lot of sleepless nights from the coaching staff, we can tell <laughs> you that. 
uh, research in the opposition, obviously, and then uh, going into logistics. Gets away with a full toss. Yeah, so basically, obviously, no part we're preparation mode. We are in camp, full camp. I'm here in Antigua just for about 11 days. As I said before, we had two tours as well. So it was about combinations, getting the team settled. Now that the team has been selected, you drill down into skill specifics. You try to iron out any kinks in the team in terms of how your batters are going to play, identify roles, etc., and really get on with the business. Obviously, uh, we'll be looking to, to try our best to get out of Group C. Maybe just slipping a bit there, Afi Fletcher. So she's gone for some sawdust to put on that landing area can impact you as a bowler. It's bowled well so far though in these first 10 deliveries. There's Ariel. And you mentioned those two tours. One of them was to India. What was sort of the exposure like into a country where, I mean, you look at today's game, 40,000 people turned out to see India play Australia. Well, I would say uh, at first it, it was a bit surreal for the, for the girls understanding not only responsibility, but how people view cricket um, over the world, you know, the response that they would have gotten from the time they were traveling through the airport to the grounds as well. So it's a case where, uh, you know, as I said, they're exposed to different conditions, um, different cultures, understanding of what cricket means uh, to other people all over the world, and then obviously trying to get on with the games. Um, obviously, the first two games that we had were against uh, India, very strong uh, India team, but they settled as they went into the tournament and they, they got some good showings, particularly against New Zealand. Uh, possibly the reason why we see these two young ladies, Trisha Hoda and Janaba Joseph, uh, being included in the squad because they had some strong scores coming through the back end of the tournament. 88 for two after 11 overs. Krishna Ramnarak continuing from that Sir Andy Roberts end. So these two spinners operating in tandem. It's an interesting one, Jamal. I think just judging on what we've seen in this series as well as the one international series, that group of those to come becomes so important to sort of refining. You look at this England team, four or five players in and around that 20 to 21-year-old mark. Just be another single. Since they've taken that wicket of Winfield Hill, things have slowed down considerably for the English. So is that something that the younger players and the coaching staff are aware of, seeing that, you know, it's sort of been a new era in West Indies cricket? Yeah, we obviously understand the responsibility, firstly, as a coaching staff, as I said, uh, head coach Steve Laybird, uh, the different plans going through with Graham West, uh, the high-performance manager, trying to get things right. So as a case where, you know, you try to put your plans together. Where do you want to be in the next three to five years? Where do you want your players to be? How many players realistically uh, can get forced their way into the squad based on, on the rules that, you know, are vacant, so to speak? And, and these are the areas that we are trying our best to top up on. Chance of a catch for Haley Matthews. It was struck powerfully. Well timed by Nat Silver. Yes, again, that intent that we were speaking to, uh, but it really was a chance as well there in the care, but again, the intent, a nice firm strokes at the end of the day, don't do the long on area, and that is something that we would like to see from our younger batters as well, you know, getting through those middle overs, looking to hit those sweepers, get the ball down to long on and long off. Goes big this time. And she's got all of that, Danny Wyatt. And she'll bring up 50 as well with it. It's been such a well-constructed innings. And it's just her third 50, sorry, 10th 50 correction at this T20 international level, along with 200s. She's been destructive. Yeah, most important thing for me there as well is the strike rate, uh, something that we do need to improve on. And we can take a leaf out of these England players' books, and certainly in terms of getting on with business. The T20 format, as you know, is all about scoring. And once again, there we see a lovely stroke down the track, over long on. And these are the kind of strokes you want to be teaching the younger generation. This is what you want to see from the senior West Indies team as well. Speak about that intent. Something we saw from Janaba Joseph in her short stay at the crease. He used her feet, got a boundary over long off. But clearly that's been 
a strategy and a mindset has been tried to be employed into these under 19 girls yes yeah, certainly just drilling chipping and driving hit those sweepers you know some days you don't get it right similar area but hasn't got it well enough this time Wyatt but it will end the over with a couple of runs meaning eight runs required for victory 98 for two England and Jamal Tell us a bit about that sort of intent in terms of the batting especially because clearly you look at the women's game in the last two series, New Zealand and this one, dot ball percentage has been a big problem. How do we rectify that with the next crop to come? More from you and then we'll hear from Mali Richards. Yeah, well, as I said, you know, it's a, it's a case of working on the skills, getting them to understand le lengths that they can score from, getting the ball down to the sweepers, down to the long on, down to the long off, using the depth of the crease, punching balls, through the infield using soft hands as well it's, it's one of those cases where it is it is about building the skill uh, so you would see that from our regional 50 over tournament uh, the female tournament that is that these were areas that were lacking and these are the areas you're trying to improve on as you go into an under 19 world cup well said coach england now just eight away from winning this first t20 international And we've seen, coach, we've seen uh, young Joseph, Trishan, as you said, she's in the squad as well. Any other names we should be looking out for out of this under-19 squad? Yeah, I, certainly. Um, Asabi Calendar, the skipper as well. Uh, Munasar, she bowls a good off break. Mm. Shalini Samaru, another good off spinner. They're definitely a few wrong. And as I said, it's a matter now of drilling down the skills and getting them uh, to understand their role in the team and what they can offer uh, as the future of West Indies cricket. This is uh, where it's about building skills. And hopefully, um, over the next two to three years, we can see some more of these young ladies coming through the system and into the senior team. Gajnabi. The new bowler, she's been smoked over extra cover though on this occasion. England romping home here, coach. Yes, most certainly again, that, that positive intent. There you see it on the monitor. Really a wide half volley, full execution, accessing the offside, into the space, intent, clear understanding of where the field was, a couple of bounces away on this very long boundary as well. Four more runs. Just three remaining now to win this game and the West Indies would be in a group in the under-19 World Cup with, is it Ireland, Indonesia, and the final team? New Zealand. New Zealand. So would you be fancying your chances of making it out the group? Yes, most certainly. Um, well, we did play against New Zealand in that tour, albeit that we lost two games. It'd be interesting to note that New Zealand actually did play uh, four or five players over the age of 21 against us. Wow. And, and we ran them ragged. It was really proud of some of the efforts again from Janava Joseph in mm -hmm. particular and Trisha Hodor who are in the squad and, and a couple of the others as I said our spinners they really hold the middle for us so you know quietly confident and that's gonna be it England romp home by eight wickets in this first T20 international series between obviously England and the West Indies 1-0, 4 to go. we leave here and go to Barbados on coach just to, just to finish. Young oh, Joseph, you saw her have a, a pretty decent innings uh, making her debut here in international cricket. What did you see from her that would have, would have, would have uh, uh, encouraged you? Well, first of all, obviously that lovely chip and a laugh over mid-off. <laughs> um, the and team seemed to really like Yes, that, the yeah. team certainly, and as I said, the intent, the intent to score. Obviously, a bit of batsmanship would have to come into play experience. Off spinner just carrying her a little wide, but mm. good encouraging signs to see that she's not afraid to use her feet. She's not afraid to try to get on with it, especially batting at number five first game out. She could have easily um, let the situation go out the better, better of her and not get a look at what she has to offer. But certainly, just from that snapshot, that little glimpse, you get an idea of what's in the future. Uh, hopefully, and as I said, hopefully in the future, particularly for West Indies women's cricket, there's something more fruitful to come. Well, from all of us here, let's say thank you for, for joining us in the booth and uh, really 
keeping us informed about what's going on with that West Indies women's under 19 squad and we'd want to wish you all the best yeah, going into that World Cup. Thanks very much. Yeah man, thanks for having you. But it is England who romp home by eight wickets in 12.4 overs. The West Indies failing actually to take a wicket apart from via the run out route. The top scorer for England, Danny Wyatt, with 59 from 34 deliveries. Sophia Dunkley chipped in with 25 from 21. I think Stacey Ann's going to join me for the post match discussion. And that silver was not out on three. Like I said, no West Indian bowler managed to pick up a wicket in this match. And as we have a look at England women's batting scorecard, just two runouts. Shamin Campbell, good to see those runouts. But again, a dominant show from England as to their batting. Very, very dominant indeed. Uh, it was a bit tough for them to begin with. Dunkley in particular, maybe just struggling to time the ball in the first couple of overs or so. But as she got her first boundary away, she was away. And uh, maybe she could be a, a, a valid option at the top of the innings going forward in that World Cup. Do you see that being a role for her? Yeah, I think that's her position, her and Danny Wyatt. Uh, Lauren Winfield Hill, well, she came in at number three, didn't quite get as many as she wanted after making her way back into this England team, and she'll be disappointed with just scoring 15. But yeah, Sophia Dunkley, I like how she adjusted and how quickly she adjusted. That first over from Chanel Henry, she really struggled, but found a way, worked it out out there, and was able to just really play through the line and, and just understand what the pitch was doing. Danny Watt, well, she was exceptional once again with that 59 or 34. And she shows immense power for such a small player, doesn't she? Uh, yeah, and her timing as well. Yes, and she's, uh, she's hit multiple sixes throughout this series as well. This is the bowling card here. Chanel Henry, like you said, very expensive today, going for almost 11s in her two overs. Two for 21, no wickets. Hayley Matthews as well, failing to pick up a wicket. Along with all the other bowlers, Ali Aline, quite expensive, had that chance go to Hayley Matthews that she couldn't take. But all in all, pretty disappointing performance from the West Indies. Yeah, three job catches in that West Indies bowling innings. And I just thought that maybe Kurish Maram Harak and Afi Fletcher came in a bit too late. Mm. I thought there was probably a bit too much pace in that, that, that first power play. And maybe just bowling them in shorter spells as well. Just to switch up her bowlers, Haley Matthews might be a better option rather than to stick with so much pace well, when, when batters seem to get really comfortable with what was happening. Well, we saw that was a tactic that the English actually used uh, with the way that they rotated their bowlers. Didn't really allow the West Indian batters to, to get accustomed to any one particular bowler for a length of time. Just kept ringing the changes. It was good to see Gajnabi actually get the ball. She's mainly, to me, a bowling all-rounder who hasn't bowled very much in this series. Correct. We didn't see a feature at all in the ODIs and just four balls in this over in tonight's T20 match. I think they, they just need to use her a bit more as well because, again, she hasn't bowled, so there's just that unfamiliarity as well for the English players. And every time I've seen her bowl, she uses those cutters and... Scoring is always quite difficult against her, especially in these conditions. Seems like there's just a bit of rain coming down now, Stacey Ann. So pretty lucky of us to get that game over with yeah, at the time that we did. Yeah, and just a reminder, well, England, they won the toss. And for the first time in this series, opted to mm -hmm. have a ball first. First time in the series, indeed. West Indies batting first. Only managed 105, and in the end, well, England did chase that dog in 12.4 overs. 106 for two. Yeah, 105 for seven in there, 20 overs at a run rate of 5.25, the West Indies. So, definitely a lot for coach Courtney Walsh and his staff to think about, uh, and I think batting 
will definitely be the number one issue on the cards. But we'll just have a look at a few of the replays here, Stacey, and the first wicket going down here today. Yeah, it was two runouts, as we mentioned, and that first runout of and Sophia Dunkley and then Lauren Wilmfield Hill. But some really good shots from Danny Wyatt. And she played throughout and, and all parts of the field. Yes, and she shows really supple hands, Danny Wyatt. Allows the ball to come on. And when she looks to go down the ground as well, it's with immense power. That was poor fielding from Chanel Henry there. Allowing that one to go through for four. But England chose the aerial route early as well in that power play for the West Indies. Yeah, I just like how they back themselves. So really, as, as, as they kept saying, that fearless brand of cricket and the timing as well was pretty spot on. And as you said, that field placing, knowing where fielders were and really taking it to West Indies in that power play. Yes, scoring square of the wicket and down the ground. And I think Danny Wyatt and Sophia Dunkley in particular were very strong down the ground. Every time the West Indies ball is overpitched, made them pay. This one edged over that first slip from Lauren Winfield Hill. Didn't quite go to hand. So it was all smooth sailing here for England. They really didn't have to do anything too much because that start of 47 for one after the first power play, well, I mean, they really set a good base. West Indies, in comparison, were 27 for three after their six overs. So it was a boundary-laden power play, almost, for the English. Down the ground, like we said, in particular, showing strength. These two English batters, Ramarak, came into the attack pretty late. This was that run out, that second run out of Lauren Winfield Hill. Good to see. Shamin Campbell at point. And that was the huge six over wide long on from Danny Wyatt. Made an almighty sound in the in our headphones through the stump mic. Big, big six from the young lady and her score of 59, the top score today. 59 of 34. 34 really deliveries. Mm. <laughs> that strike rate, like. She's been in really good form, Danny Wyatt. Yes, her second half century of the series. Picking up one in the ODI series as well. And that's something we need to think about or even just discuss slightly. The lack of... Uh, half centuries or centuries from the West Indian batters. But now we'll go to the post-match presentation with Nikhil Utamchandani. End of the first T20 International. We're here at the post-match presentation. And of course, we have a chat with the two captains as well as the player of the match. We'll ask losing captain Haley Matthews to have a chat with us. Haley, another tough day at the office for you guys. Again, the runs, batting first, not only 105 on the board. Was that where you lost this game? Yeah, 100%. I think for the entire series, ODI and T20 now, um, we've been talking about not getting enough runs. And, yeah, it's still clearly a problem for us. So, yeah, just think as batters, we're going to have to look at what we can do better to put a better score up on the board at the end of the day. You lost four in the power play. How much of an improvement does that need to be going through this series in order to get you guys some bigger scores? Yeah, I think strong strong starts are very important. Um, obviously, we would have seen England have a pretty strong start um, to their power play, and it kind of won them the game uh, early on. So, yeah, just hopefully we can lose a couple less wickets early on in our next game and, yeah, just try to improve on those little things going forward. On a more positive note, though, you were 16 in after 15 overs and you guys got past 100. Tell us about that fight and how happy were you with the knot from Chanel Henry to get you guys to that mark? Yeah, it was just really good to see her spend some time at the crease uh, herself. She'd be Gajnabi. Um, really good as well to see Janaba Joseph make her debut today. Um, probably didn't get firing, but just really good to see the way she was shaping up at the crease. And yeah, shows a lot of promise for the future. So still some positives to take out of this one. Um, and yeah, hopefully we can learn a lot and move forward in T20 series with that. 
Excited for Barbados? Yeah, 100%. I um, haven't gotten the chance to play home in a while. Um, I know the girls are definitely buzzing to get to go down there. So, yeah, really looking forward to it. And hopefully I can bring a change of fortune for us as well. All the best for the next game. Thank you. I was Haley Matthews, losing captain today. We asked Heather Knight, now the English captain. I thought this is becoming a, a common trend. You guys continue to put in good performances here in the Caribbean. How happy are you with this performance? Yeah, pretty good. It's obviously our first run out in T20, so nice to, to get into the rhythms of, of that type of cricket. I think probably still things we can prove on. I think our fielding um, wasn't as good as it could have been today, but um, yeah, really good first run out. I think the way we set the tone for the match first up is what I wanted from the girls. Really wanted to attack um, the first six overs and try and win that power play, which is what we did. Now, you've opted to have Lauren Winfield Hill into the team, but you still kept that opening partnership of Dunkley and Danny Wyatt, which has worked well for you during the year. Is that sort of a strategy going forward? Yeah, obviously, uh, Dunks is quite new to the role. Danny's done it outstandingly for a long time now, but um, Dunks is still learning it a little bit and, and what tempo to go at. And we put her up there to try and be really aggressive. Um, and she's done that really successfully. And um, obviously, with, with Capsi picking up an injury, um, we've we've brought Lauren into that, that role and, and just want her to keep going. And we've got the, the depth in the batting order that can really punch out big scores. So, um, yeah, Danny was outstanding today, I think, showing what a class T20 player she is, one of the best we'll ever have. Um, yeah, straight into her work and uh, scoring very quickly. And speaking of outstanding, on the bowling side of things, Lauren Bell and your seamers, especially Catherine Brent, who missed that um, T20, sorry, one international series, coming up big for you guys. How impressed were you with them? Yeah, really nice to have Brenty back. Um, it's really nice to chuck her the new ball and, and watch her charge in. Uh, I think she might have been a bit nervous today, actually, obviously having not played for a little bit, but um, yeah, didn't show. And, and Lauren, I think, swung the ball, bowled at good pace, um, been really aggressive, and, and we're looking to take wickets in that in that first uh, couple of overs and in power play. So, yeah, great great stuff from there, guys. We finally saw you with the ball as well. Is that a plan going into that uh, T20 World Cup? Uh, maybe, yeah. I've, uh, if I need to bowl the odd, odd over here and there, I will do. Um, I haven't bowled a huge amount, obviously, with the injury that I had um, in the summer. I'm so, still sort of coming back and, and getting into the groove of it. But, um, yeah, the odd, the odd part-time over uh, might be a plan if we're only playing five bowlers. Well, average of 25 with the ball. We're looking forward to it. All the best for the second T20. Awesome. Thank you very much. Heather Knight, the winning captain. And finally, today's player of the match, and she set the tone with the ball in hand. Four overs, two wickets, 26 runs. Lauren Bell, 21 years old. First T20 international wicket today, she'll collect her trophy and just display it to the public at home. If you want to just turn that. <laughs> Sorry, oh, I'm holding it the wrong way. <laughs> Lauren, uh, fa fantastic. Congrats on your excellent performance. Coming into this game, hadn't taken a T20 international wicket. Today you have three. How much does it mean to you? Yeah, no, um, today was a great day, I think. Obviously, I played a bit in the, in the summer, but it's nice to come back into the squad and put in a good performance. Now, you took four wickets in that second ODA and now three today. What is it about Antigua and the West Indies that you enjoy so much? Um, I think it's more of the batting, backing of the coaches. I think I've got a really clear purpose that it's my job to come in and take wickets. And, yeah, I'm happy to be doing that. You were really good in the 100 earlier this year. How much do you think that's helped to get ready for the international level? Yeah, I think the 100 is a great competition. It puts me up against some of the best in the world. And, yeah, I think it's really put me in a good space for international cricket. Mm -hmm. I heard you mention coach and the captain as well coming into the series. They've talked about wanting to bat youngsters and youth, but also being fearless and being very aggressive. How much has that helped you feel a lot more comfortable, you know, playing more senior cricket? Yeah, I think it's nice to have the backing of coaches and captain. And we're really clear that we want to come in and take wickets. And yeah, I think it's really put us in a good place moving forward. Well, you got that ball to move laterally early. Um, is that something you've been working on, trying to get the ball to swing with the new ball and then coming back at the back end and doing a job for your team as well? Yeah, I think one of my main strengths is to swing the ball and I think I'll always try and use that effectively. And then, yeah, Gush has got to be really clear of our plans at the end. Um, I think, yeah, one of their batters batted really well, but yeah, just be clear at the death. Congrats to you and look forward to seeing you in the rest of the series. Thank you very much. Today's player of the match, Lauren Bell, three wickets to 26 runs. And that ends the first T20 International. But don't go too far, of course, because we have four more coming your way from sunny Barbados. It's bye for now. Thank you, Nikhil. So, the situation of the series, 1-0 going to Barbados. Stacey Ann King, I'll give you the final word. <laughs> well, England, uh, they have taken this first match. As Nikhil said, we head to Barbados for the remaining four matches. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, from our commentary team, Marley Richards, Sir Kirtley Ambrose, Nikhil, Thank you. Uh, thank you so very much for joining us. Uh, we hope that you've enjoyed our commentary.
and we'll see you then.